Sons of Apollo splits into two bands in 2020. It becomes Whom Gods Destroy with Derek, the keyboard player, and it becomes Art of Anarchy revived uh, with Jeff singing. And yeah, I'm living two lives. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's Keefe at GhostCultMag.com. I am once again thrilled to be joined by Bumblefoot, Ron Thal. How are you doing, sir? Good. Hello again. I feel like you're a little bit in the uh, the, the construct uh, mode from the Matrix. It's so white and pristine in your area there, in your studio. <laughs> it's just yeah, sunlight. My, my studio behind me. I think the walls are looking a little brighter on this camera. I'm, I might be a closet goth also with the, I always have the shades down and the lights down except when I'm recording interviews so uh, or videos. So I get it. Uh, sunlight is good for you people. Get outdoors and see some sunshine. This is so cool to talk to you about this band, Whom Gods Destroy. I know the title is from deep a deep cut from literature, but it's also the title of a Star Trek episode from the 60s that I love and everyone hates, but I love it. And uh, so Who I hope that's it? a reference. I don't know. I saw some very negative stuff online when I was uh, looking through the original series uh, fanpedia stuff. You know, fans, no one hates something. It's like metal. Nobody hates metal like metalheads. Nobody hates Star Wars like Star Wars fans. And no one hates Trek like Trekkies, you know, or Trekkers. They it's really passion. are. Yeah, it's passion, but it's also, you can be too much. But this band is pretty amazing. Uh, I'm so stoked for this release, Insanium. Is coming out soon on Inside Out Music, uh, a label you know well. And I just before we dig into the band and the and the album, I did want to ask because I think I'm confused a little by the timeline of things because you have been in so many projects, especially the last few years. You have seemed to be working nonstop, and so I just I know um, you know Sons of Apollo was kind of ending. You had this project. You were in Asia, you have other bands. So what was kind of the genesis, if you don't mind, of this band coming together and the timeline of recording, right. if you will? All right, let's go back a tad. Uh, I guess for everything that's going on right now, it kind of starts in 2011 with the band Art of Anarchy, which is two old friends of mine. And I've known them since they were teenagers and I would record all their bands and everything. And they started this thing. They just wanted to make their dream album with all different singers on it. And it was right in this room. We would record everything. And I was the producer. And then I was laying a couple of guitar tracks in there too. And then the first singer of the band, Scott Weiland, he, he did one song. He was just going to do one song. Everybody was going to do one song. He did one. And then his manager said, why don't we make this a band? Let's make this a full thing. And Scott, he'll do the whole album. And, and they really, you know, love bombed. And, and it's like, all right, let's do it. And it became a band that was going on. And it wasn't until 2015 till that album came out along with my last solo album little brother is watching 2015 and then from there uh, we lost mr wyland and started with singer number two then in 2017 we put out album number two and started sons of apollo at the same time just as that album was coming out sons of apollo was and asia hit me up and said would you want to play guitar with us for an upcoming tour opening for journey well i got this band that's putting out an album and it's going to need to do some shows and i have this other one starting up that i got to get finished up and and get that album out so this year won't work so that was 2017 so art of anarchy and then the debut sons of apollo album came out and then 2018, touring the fuck out of Sons of Apollo. Uh, 2019, started uh, working on album number two with Sons of Apollo. And Asia hit me up again, said, hey, you want to play guitar? And I knew I wasn't going to be touring that much with other people. I was touring like crazy myself, doing solo touring nonstop. Every corner of the world I was hitting. But I can make my own schedule. So it's like, yeah, I can make room for Asia. I'd be more than happy to now, now that I can. And they were opening for Yes. I was like, hell yeah. So did that and was playing guitar. And then the singer that they had lined up, uh, like a fifth member, just, just singing, he had to pull out. He couldn't do it. So all the guys said, hey, why don't you sing? I'm like, geez, okay. So I'm going to play guitar, which is a lot. You know, Steve Howe is amazing, but now to also sing and pay tribute and celebrate the life properly and the legacy of John Wenton, that's a lot to ask. And I did it. So, so I was singing, 
and playing guitar fronting Asia in 2019, opening for Yes. That's like a, a bucket list thing that you didn't even put on the bucket list because you didn't think it would even get on the bucket list. So that was nice. That was real nice. Then in 2020, the second Sons of Apollo album comes out. And we start touring and the world shuts down right as we're revving up and everything is going great. We're just like really taking off. And now we have all this time, the wonderful gift of time. So many of us in the band are saying we would love to make a third album. We, get, we have time to like really nurture it and, and make album number three. Not everybody was on board to do that. Derek and I kept writing as if it would be album number three, just the way we always wrote for Sons of Apollo. He and I made the music. We would just send ideas back and forth and build on them and do everything that we always did. And we just kept on going. And I always wondered, maybe, hopefully this, you know, we'll see, this might be, maybe people will come around, it'll be album number three, uh, but obviously no. And then Dino joined and it's like, okay, this is becoming something else. And Yaz joined and Bruno joined. And while that was going on, Jeff Scott Soto, singer of Sons of Apollo, he knew that the Voda brothers that started Art of Anarchy were coming over every Friday and recording a song. And we would just write something, bust something out, and it'd start in the afternoon. By nighttime, we have a song recorded. And he said, you know, you should have just had me be the singer from the very beginning and everything would have been fine. And I have to agree, after years of knowing him and working with him, it was phenomenal to be in a band with. So I mentioned it to the Voda brothers and they said, absolutely, if he wants in, he's in. So now Jeff is in <laughs> Art of Anarchy. Sons of Apollo splits into two bands in 2020. It becomes Whom Gods Destroy with Derek, the keyboard player, and it becomes Art of Anarchy revived uh, with Jeff singing. And the timeline of both, just working on the albums and getting the record deal and finishing the mixing and mastering and doing everything and the photo shoots and the videos were all happening at the same time. And now, today, as we speak, the Art of Anarchy album came out. And in less than a month, <laughs> the Whom Gods Destroy album comes out. And yeah, I'm living two lives. So that's, that's it. The thing with Asia, that, you know, that was a touring thing. And there wasn't going to be any new music written. It wasn't going to be a long-term band thing. It was just us all getting together and, and just keeping it going and me doing my part to help them do that. Art of Anarchy, Whom Gods Destroy. The two, I guess if you cut the Sons of Apollo worm in, in half, broke off into two pieces. And now those two are squiggling. So that is where it is at. So we have those two bands with albums coming out in the second half of March. Art of Anarchy is gonna be on the road doing some shows in the Midwest and the Northeast. And soon after I will put out my next solo album that I was working on as well. And it's a crazy ass instrumental album with some cool guests and that will come out after these do. The album's been ready since June, but I've just been slowing the pace and putting my time into getting these bands. So they're going and now I'm gonna run back to my own thing, my own life and get that going again. And while doing all of that, there is all the producing that I've been doing of different bands. There is one of them in particular called the Dodies, D-O-D-I-E-S. They're this duo, singing guitar player, has this Kurt Cobain-ish energy to him, but this incredible multi-dimensional voice with this incredible range and, and dynamics and everything. And the drummer plays the drums with one arm while playing bass on a keyboard with his left hand and singing back in vocal. And every once in a while, he just grabs the stick from here and, and plays with both arms. And the guitarist kicks on an octave pedal that runs to a bass amp and he becomes the bassist. They take turns being the bassist. And their music is very, musically reminds me of Radiohead type melody stuff, things you wouldn't expect that's just really deep and just works. Ah. They're just great. So last year we recorded album number three. I recorded their first two albums as well. And that's gonna be coming out this year too. So a lot of music coming out. Yeah. Wow, 
thank you so much for unpacking all of that. Uh, so many think first of all, the uh, entire progressive rock nation salutes you for your service. Uh, I can't tell you. I know I get I get laughed at how much I love Asia. There's no laughing oh, come matter. On, they're, they, they're so phenomenal, and for you to yeah, carry the legacy. To, who, yeah. Who the hell would laugh at that? You I, have. I think my BLP, very. Yeah. You have UK. Yeah. You have. <laughs> yes, coming together. All together. Yeah, it was an incredible band. I think just the two, the big hit songs kind of like make people think of one thing. And I think of them as a completely different band. We had a couple of hit songs, kind of like Yes in the 80s. Uh, we have some pop songs that, you know, broke through. And then also this incredible band that, you know, did their thing. So thank you very much, though. A, a no small task to to both do, uh, you know, justice to Steve Howe and uh, the late John Wetton. And also, I love just, uh, I'm sure it wasn't on purpose, but I love that you said the second singer of Sons of Anarchy, like he who shall not be named, which is uh, Scott, <laughs> Scott Stapp for all our listeners of the Reunited Creed. This it's I, I tip my hat to you to manage both bands uh, and congrats on the new album uh, of Art of Anarchy. Whom Gods Destroy is phenomenal. And I know that you had this really great rapport with Derek. So I wanted to kind of start talking about the music there that you have this, you know, have developed this really great writing team. Derek, I've interviewed also and has walked me through his personal process on how he collaborates. So I wanted to hear like, you know, does this could uh, the kernel of a song as it begin with could be anything is a palette blank is it one of you comes in with an idea and the other finishes what's that like pretty much like that one of us has an idea we send a little 10 second mp3 to the other and they send something back that they added to it and we just go back and forth you just run with it and keep adding to it yourself and but in the end it becomes a song but it's been the same with with Derek where uh, I'll send him something that sounds like Pantera or Soundgarden and he'll send me something that sounds like Rainbow or Led Zeppelin and <laughs> we just add our gunk to each and, and just keep building and building and that's it and it becomes a song and we just keep arranging and rearranging as our hair is getting ripped out and getting it all together and in the end comes what it became. I, th I think it's fair to say that uh, Whom Gods Destroy is arguably your heaviest band in a long time. It is so heavy and I really enjoy the guitar stuff most of all, but it, it's just uh, overall such a grooving heavy pocket, which is, you know, a tribute to your rhythm section also, but the tracks are just bangers. Yeah, it's the direction that I always kind of hoped Sons of Apollo would go push for to just sweat a little more you know just turn up the intensity not push a, a little bit push ourselves harder and with this album we did that we got to do that and the energy of bruno and yaz uh dino yeah absolutely i don't want to get too much into comparing uh dino and jeff i know the fans will do that themselves uh they're both wonderful and amazing they dino are. is really underrated somehow uh because I think he's just such a chameleon that he's been known for a lot of different things, but he has a little uh, gravitas to his voice that I don't, I don't think Jeff hey, Jeff has, but doesn't favor. And Dino will lean into it on this record in some spots that will surprise you. He is really unbelievable on this album. Check out this new Art of Anarchy album because Jeff gets pretty heavy too. Both of these singers definitely as much as they could sing soulful and certainly do it genuinely, they can also really dig in. Yeah, people will compare, but that's what people do. We compare. Of course, I mean, we can't help but, ourselves, and especially critics also are probably, you know, we're not helpful. And <laughs> we're be of use, critics. And uh, and listen, I love Jeff. Jeff is wonderful. I've met him. I've interviewed him. He's incredible. And I'm a humongous fan. Uh, but I think Dino is really going to, you know, hit a level on this that I think people have yet to recognize, I think, the masses. I mean, Jeff has been doing this for 40 years, and people know very well how he sounds, how he writes, everything about him. Like, they really know him. Dino is just hitting the scene, so people are getting to know Dino. The thing with that is when you're just starting out, a lot of times people hear one thing and think that it's everything, and they don't realize how much more dimension a person has and how many more things they can do with their voice. I like to use that word dimension. Uh, a one-dimensional singer is one that sings just one way everything that's all they do, like a guitarist that only plays with one tone and no other, and, or, you know, a drummer that only plays one kind of beat, that's one-dimensional. Someone that has just all different shit to them. 
which a normal human being does and should show, uh, that's, that's what I'm talking. And both, they have a lot of dimension. And you'll hear it on, on the Whom Gods Destroy stuff. He sings soft, he kind of screams, he sings soulful, he sings high, he sings low. Get a great idea of just how much he can do with his voice. Yeah, Dino's great. So and he's a great guy. Both, I'm, I'm yeah. lucky. I've, you know, singers are known for being notoriously difficult human beings. I am very lucky to be working with Jeff and Dino because both of them are fantastic. Right on. Uh, I I will also say I feel like just to, just to throw up one more shine on Jeff is that I think Jeff has like a Dorian Gray type of painting in his house somewhere because that dude does not aid. He takes really good care of himself. Uh, but yeah, man, this record is so complete and, and a really great listen and re-listens. Uh, you know, uh, we writers talk about playability, replayability you know repeat listens it's such a good record i had it just going on a loop yesterday and uh, yeah it's it's a journey i like records that have kind of like a flow and not just like all you know one volume the whole way so i do like that there's a lot of dynamics and i like that you it is it is you know it's got its own thing it really has its own sound different than anything you've worked on which i really like obviously it's guitar based progressive metal but it's also other things too and i like that this Something for everyone. If you're a drummer, you're going to dig it. Guitar player, hopefully you'll dig it. Uh, keyboardist, plenty of that on there. Yaz is known for being an incredible virtuosic guitar player, but he's a phenomenal bass player, like real deal fingers, and he's a hell of a musician. And Dino also, he's a great keyboard player as well. Everyone I'm in a band with, a lot of uh, multi-instrumental, multi-talented people. I'm lucky. Yeah. You got the whole paint box to paint with when you write a song, uh, when you have a band like this, which is really terrific. Uh, and obviously, like you said, you're trying to manage all of your projects in time. Uh, you know, is it realistic for both of these bands to get out on the road and have equal time or one more than the other? What do you think is uh, potentially possible? It's possible. The whole thing is that everyone in all the bands, is, they're doing other things. Art of Anarchy, you have two guys that are in Trans-Siberian Orchestra, so nothing from second half of October to early January. Bruno plays in Angra. He's gonna be busy doing things with them. So everyone has other things that they do. So it's similar to Sons of Apollo, just the juggling act of planning way ahead of time and saying, okay, we need to carve out this time, don't book anything from here to here. We're going to fill it with our thing. And that's the way you have to do it. And then just in terms of guitar work, uh, you know, like I said, I feel like this is a, you know, all your works are uh, complete collections of songs. Obviously, people flock to you for guitar acrobatics and athletics and things. But I like that, you know, yes, there's some fun stuff on there. And there's phenomenal solos, of course. It goes without saying. But I think, like this album especially in the same vein as sons of apollo and art of anarchy it's about the songs so i really like that you're there's a lot of times where you're just playing for the song and you know yes there'll be some some cool things going on in the background on repeat listens oh i heard like a little scrapey thing there or a tapping thing but like i don't think you're overdoing it at all and i like that you're you know as a as a player you know you could do anything but you're present on the track which i think is you know important thank you <laughs> Um, my early in the day interviews are always full of compliments and then later in the day I'm all picking apart things so I think there's two sides of my brain that are also need reconciling but I'm yeah man, I got I'm, you in the morning yeah definitely get me in the morning everybody don't get me at night or weekends I feel bad anywho uh yeah man this uh you know what a what a strong record I really can't wait for people to hear it and of course I don't want anyone to not listen you know please listen to all Ron's albums and um you know uh as we wind this down uh, I was thinking I am going to get to talk to you, and it's actually, this is a little wa wacky, but it's 20 years since you stopped working with Guns N' Roses. And I feel like, I did want to take the opportunity, because we haven't talked in a while, that I feel like, yeah, like, as, yeah, 2004, right? Like, I no, think, of, or, I oh, 2009? 14, that's right, sorry. 10 years. I started sorry. talking to them 20 years ago, and we started working 18 years ago. I'm, I'm only on a sip of coffee today, so I oh, need a whole good. cup. Okay. But here's but here's my point, though, is I think in the time since GNR reunited and they're playing a lot of Chinese democracy songs that you had a hand in or two hands in, I feel like that album's gotten its proper respect now because I like seeing... I've seen the band a few times and they kill it on those songs. And I love hearing those songs interpreted by the classic and current lineup of the band together. 
and I wanted your take on that. I feel like it was maligned a lot for other reasons that have nothing to do with the music. And now I think people are really appreciating that album. Good, I hope they are. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot to hear in that album. It's one of those albums, you keep listening, you hear more. And to me, it's like a Pink Floyd or a Zeppelin record. And when I go back to those records and I re-listen to them after a long time, it's like, oh, I'm hearing things I never heard before. It's very multi-layered. And I think it was, you know, unfairly treated by everyone at the time. And I understand why. But also, like, you know, I want to give you, I want to make sure people are remembering that you had a hand in that also. Uh, in that, you know, compositions and playing and then touring, which is no easy feat. You've been in some of these incredible bands and you have, I like, think, really a great temperament and personality. Obviously, people want to work with you, but you can handle it. Like, you can handle what a Swiss no, Army can't. knife got. <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, no. Uh, I'm there doesn't you know doesn't mean i'm handling it well yeah i've definitely with any band and bunch of people what happens is you know the good stuff is contagious and the bad stuff is contagious so if there's bad vibes it's hard to ignore if there's good vibes other people lift you up or drag you down kind of how it goes and you fight it as well as you can that's all you can do what i tend to say is we do the best we can with who we were at that time in the situation we were in and that pretty much goes for anything and if you look back on your life and anything that you wish you could go back and change you did the best you could with who you were at that time in the situation you were in. and if it happened now things would be different that's how it goes good advice for for working musicians there from ron uh just the last question because i don't know when you sleep but outside of music uh, and and family and personal things what hobbies do you have time for that are not involved with making music i don't i i play with my cat movies on tv with the missus and answer hundreds of emails and emails and playing with the cat well i make hot sauce i have a hot sauce company i've had that for 11 years now yeah so i'm a huge, I'm a huge hot sauce fan so we're gonna, we're gonna get hot some. sauce i have yet to try it but yeah, i'm gonna check get it out there's two of some. them that are edible i have two of them that are are edible and one that is intolerable it's it's just beyond the scope of what a human being should ever even attempt to ingest it is way too damn hot uh so one is like a nice mild delicious complex red sauce it's not just vinegar and pepper it's got a lot of herbs in there and it just goes with everything i wanted a sauce that goes with everything and this is that sauce it's called the sauce and it works on any kind of food that you could put hot sauce on then I have a more barbecue-y one with cherry, bourbon, chipotle. And that one is called Bumbalicious. And both of them, very tasty, drinkably tasty. And then there is one that is just off the charts of, of Scoville rating, just one dot, just a dot, like the head of a pen on your tongue will light your mouth on fire for 10 minutes agonizingly. Uh, one drop will heat an entire plate of food from nothing to hot. It's ridiculous. And the name of that sauce is Bumblefuck. And it really, it lives up to its name. It fucks people up. I have, I have no words and for, people for like these it. names. And it's, they, it's the best seller. Go figure. Out of all of them, it's the best selling sauce. People like pain. Or maybe they like to buy it for other people to induce pain. <laughs> but I, I dislike my family members. Here, Merry Christmas. Exactly. Wow. Buy for someone you hate. <clears throat> there it is. The, the boss sauce was... for your enemies. What? Oh, that would be a great tagline. I'm just going to, as a marketing guy, I'm going to tell you that would be a phenomenal tagline. Uh, the boss with the sauce and the king of riffs, Ron Bumble, uh, Bumblefoot Thal. Uh, congratulations <laughs> on this new band. I get too fancy with my... Uh, words there uh whom no, gods like destroy uh the boss with the sauce maybe we'll send it to hot ones and get them to put that super super hot one on their show thanks for hanging out with us man it's always a pleasure to chop it up with you and i look forward to having this record come out and seeing you on tour with all your bands definitely pleasure is mine thank you so much see you soon take care